So today I'm going to show you some of the final stages in my refurbishing activity of this realistic STA450 receiver. This receiver hails from the early 80s, uh, originally came out in 1983 and was produced for a couple of years. I managed to pick this receiver up at, uh, at an auction and uh, well, <laughs> it's uh, it looks like it's in pretty clean condition inside. I actually didn't do any cleaning. You can still see where the, I think, original solder flux uh, has sort of splattered around inside the uh, in the unit. The uh, couple of things that I have had to do, the previous owner uh, was not very kind when he decided to give up the unit and uh, had cut off the power cord. And so I've replaced the power cord with uh, some nice shiny lamp cord. Of course, it involved some uh, desoldering work there to, uh, to get the old cord out. And uh, the other problem, let's see if you can tell here, there's a, a strain management unit there just below the fuse that's used to kind of grasp onto the cord and prevent it from sliding around. That thing is uh, a real beast to get out of the unit and uh, <laughs> even more difficult to get it into the unit. I probably just don't have the right tool for that. Um, once I got the power working on the unit, uh, it worked pretty well and uh, the light still seemed to operate, although uh, it didn't last all that long. And so today uh, in the mail arrived uh, new old stock. Uh, so these are actually the same model bulb made by a company called Stanley in China. You can actually almost read the, uh, the label there. So uh, I'm just going to turn the unit on and uh, the face plate's off so we can't really see exactly what I'm tuned into here. Uh, make sure the volume is down. Okay. So we should have power. Oh, okay. So you can see there's one speaker that I hooked up. Now I thought that there were two bulbs but it turns out that there's only one bulb that's used to illuminate the entire faceplate. So originally the faceplate seemed a little dark. Uh, now the bulb goes into a socket right there. And it's a, it's a fuse type bulb. So I'm gonna just take that I'm going to have to put the camera down in order to do this, but I'm going to slide the bulb in there. Uh, I'm going to turn it off before I do that, of course, and then we will hopefully see a much brighter display, and then we'll put the rest of it together. Bulb's in place now. The uh, blue tint on the bulb is sort of a film that's wrapped around the outside. Turn that on, and now that lights up quite nicely. I imagine it'll probably be good for another 20 or 30 years. Uh, so now let's go about getting the, the faceplate back on. Uh, from first, you can see that the front panel is attached with a pair of screws. There's one up here and there's one down here. Now, there's also another screw hole here, but that is intended to hold the bottom panel in place. And we can see if we just hold the bottom panel up here for a second, that the two screws that I indicated can be accessed without having to remove the entire bottom panel. Although I've removed the bottom panel for other reasons but uh, the bottom panel has about a half dozen screws and 
only one of those screws would need to be removed, which is right there, to get the bottom panel off. To deal with is this, there's a, a reflector here, and it fits in just uh, on the front panel here, like so. It's a little bit finicky to get in because it's a very tight fit there, but uh, that's gonna help the uh, illumination travel all the way down the dial since there's only uh, one uh, one bulb <laughs> for, for that. So, if you can tell here, there's a, there's a narrow little gap in here. Okay, and so this is just going to fit in and it's going to help move the light uh, down that range. Uh, but this is a little finicky to get in. It does have some screw holes, so it aligns with the screws. Actually, not that finicky to get in. But, uh, requires a little bit of force there. So I'm just going to finish getting that attached and uh, put the screws back in. All right, so there are three screws on the top of the front panel as well. One here and two over here. I guess uh, there's nothing really underneath the, the main part of the panel. So I guess that's why they decided to put the two screws at the end. Not that it undergoes any more strain at that part. So everything's in place, including the uh, reflector there to guide the light. I put the power switch in. Let's uh, give it a go. Oops. And so, I don't know if you can tell, uh, next time we do this, I will uh, Turn off the light. There we go. So that seems to work okay. Now one thing I have to do is I haven't hooked up the uh, the lines for the two uh, the stereo tuning lamp and the signal strength. So I'll do that. And I'll put the bottom on, and then I'll tell you about an adjustment that you should make sure to make before you close up the top. It's not crazy difficult to get the bottom attached. The one thing to take note of is that the one is screw, which is the one that's right here, is, uh, there's a little alignment hole there. You can see it's a tip of my screwdriver. And in addition to that, the... Uh, this particular screw has a finer uh, threading on it, whereas the other ones have a fairly coarse thread for going through uh, sheet metal. That one has a fine thread. All right, all the screws are now in place. And uh, also note that the, the feet also screw into the metal uh, frame structure. And so those also had to be removed. And of course, now they're back in place. So everything is back where it belongs. No screws went missing in this ordeal, which is always a good sign. Okay, so we've got the uh, front panel on, got the bottom on. Everything inside looks to be in very good shape. I didn't see any signs of any capacitors leaking all over the place. Uh, the one thing that I should want to mention just before we close it up is uh, the unit, the tuning seemed to have slipped about half a, half a dial, well dial, half a scale off. And so you can see that there are some screws here uh, that are attached to this large pulley. Uh, only one of them needed to be loosened, and that allowed me to move 
the uh, or adjust the pulley a little bit without changing the tuning on that uh, rad capacitance unit and so that helped quite a bit. I also tried dealing with this uh, adjustment screw there but uh, I think that caused more trouble than it was worth so I tried to get it back to where it was. So everything works uh, but like I say uh, for an older unit like this with uh, pure fully mechanical tuning you'll just want to make sure that you get this to, to line up as closely as you can uh, choosing a few good stations along the dial that uh, that you know and, and adjusting the unit so that it's it's uh, tuned in when the uh, when the dial is in the corresponding spot uh, just makes for a nicer overall feel once you get the unit back together so I'm gonna put the top back on uh, the top, in case you were wondering, this will be pretty obvious, but the top is made out of some uh, nice plywood. Uh, who makes things out of plywood these days? <laughs> these these days, the units put out way too much power, way too much heat uh, to use something like that as the case. Um, so you see a lot more a lot more metal in the enclosures these days. But uh, this one has a a nice case. Uh, the surround is is made out of plywood that's then stained a, a lovely shade of brown. <laughs> Just getting things finished off, the top of the unit is held in place by four screws here and here, two on each side, and a set of three screws are along the back of the top, one, two, and three. So a total of seven screws that hold the top unit onto the rest. And then that's done. And then you can see that the uh, the back here is in really nice shape. There is a, a little bit of residue from uh, some masking tape that was put on by the previous owner to label all the connections and interconnections, I guess, with other components. But uh, that was so dried out that most of the most of it just fell off, and uh, I'm slowly working at kind of scraping it away without taking away too much of the lettering. But other than that, so we've got the new power cord in place. We've got it hooked up some speakers. I'm going to turn it around, turn off the lights, turn on the power, and let you see uh, what it looks like. The unit is fully reassembled. I've darkened the room a little bit so that the light will show up better. So we can see that the uh, full panel lights up pretty well. Tuned it in there. The LED lights up. And we can certainly Let's see if we can find another station. Turn the volume down a little bit. Something maybe requires turning this knob a lot in order to get uh, to the station. There is sort of a classical station on the dial here. STA 450 AM FM stereo receiver and uh, that's now been nicely refurbished should be good to go for another 20 or 30 years and uh, if you ask me I think it's a beautiful little unit I just uh, really really like these silver fronts with simple controls not a lot to it.
Okay, well, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the comments below. And if you uh, want to see more videos of this sort, please subscribe. Bye for now.